running up the score. Jerry Napoleonello. This team has been on the clock for four months now. Why are we taking this down to the four minute mark? You know, you had you have ten minutes here. Ten minutes here, but you've had four months. The dude's got a thousand and twenty-one text messages that he hasn't read yet. Did we did we not like notice that? Kevin Donlin. Bryce Harper's a great player. He's very, very talented. Aside from last year, but I blame myself. I'm pretty sure I'm the reason for that with fantasy baseball. That's disgusting. Wow. I can't believe that's like real. I mean, again, I'm not. Uh, I shouldn't hate. I'm not going to be the kind of person that hates. <laughs> no, he, yeah, he, he hate is doing enough hating for the both of us. As a Cowboys fan, the expectations are so high, and it's just you know you're dug into the ground by the end of the season. You're like you're basically like what the Patriots are, but like you, like you try to do it, but you just don't. No. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. at least the Jets, you know what I mean? They have excuses. This is running up the score. Your one-stop spot for all things sports. Now here's your hosts, Jerry Napoleonello and Kevin Donlin. There was a video that surfaced of Spike Lee basically in an argument with Madison Square Garden security. So this is not the first time that we've seen some kind of celebrity uh, in, you know, MSG security's hands, I guess you could say. Uh, James Dolan is not doing a very good, uh, very good job owning the, the Knicks, nor is he doing a good job of anything with the Knicks, really, I should say. So there's there's a clip. Obviously, Spike Lee, because this whole thing came out, you know ESPN was all over it. So they got him on the show today with uh, First Take with Max and Stephen A. And he just basically gave his, you know, his synopsis of what happened and just letting it all out and how pissed off he is. With the Knicks, so here's Steve uh, Spike Lee uh, on first take ESPN uh, this morning. I've been using the same entrance for 28 plus years. The employees' entrance on 33rd Street. Yesterday, last night, I go in, my ticket gets scanned. I'm in. I walk. You know the elevator. Yes. I go in the elevator, an elevator. I, and also, people have their ticket scanned also. And elevator's not moving. And the security guy comes to me and says, we need you to get off the elevator. I said, for what? So we, well, we could speak about it now. I said, I'm not getting out of the elevator. So it was another five minutes. Then they finally send the elevator up because they know I'm not getting out the elevator. Get on the elevator. As you know, people don't know, the garden floor is on the fifth floor. Elevator go up to five, and security's waiting for you like it just ran out of Macy's stealing something. And they said, you, this guy, Security guy, they're all, this comes from the top. He says, Mr. Lee, you have to leave Madison Square Garden. They wanted me to leave the garden, walk outside, that, out to 33rd Street, and play where I came from, walk outside, and come back on 31st Street. Hmm. And I said, I'm not doing that. First of all, you scan my ticket. You can't scan a ticket twice. Also, I know that once you leave a sporting arena event, you can't come back in. So I don't trust these guys, so I'm not going for the okie doke Also, why are you taking a perp walk? For what? Let me just get I, in. Well, let, me, let me finish. Okay. So I said, I'm not leaving. Then I, and then they said, we want you to leave the garden. I put my hands behind my back, and I said, arrest me like my brother Charles Oakley. Then I got that guy. I had there's some brothers I know. I grew up in Fort Greene, Brooklyn. Has Spike man, butter, 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 butter. Mm. They said Spike, did some crazy stuff. But if we take you in the elevator and go up the sixth floor, not outside the garden, go up the sixth floor, we'll walk you to your seat. I said bet. So at half time, Dolan comes over to me and says, "We need to talk." I said, "Talk about what? We need to talk." I said, "Mr. Dolan." I don't want to talk about nothing. I've been coming through this entrance for 28 years. Plus, Wednesday, historic event, the world's most famous arena, Masquerade Garden. They had a Broadway. They took The Killer Mockingbird mm -hmm. and had a performance 
for 18,000 New York City public kids. Amazing event. Where did I go in? The employee entrance. That was Wednesday. So if they want to change this whole new policy they talk about, and at first they never said when the thing changed. So why not call me? When I, if, when my, my deposit to do for this astronomical price for Nick tickets, and I'm one day late, my phone is ringing off the hook. So it's not, if they change the thing, the let policy. me know. Why do you think the policy changed at least towards you? I'm being, I'm, I'm being, harassed, I'm being harassed by James Doe, I don't know why. Let me ask, what about the press release did you object to that made you say, what did the press release say that you said that's not true? That me and him, after, after he came to me, just, you know, at halftime he leaves, and he always right. walks across the court, and it's a direct, right where I'm sitting. He, and the press release says that we shook hands and we were laughing. They actually said this was, is what it was, says. A Nick spokesman said that it was untrue, that it was simply an issue of Lee using the wrong entrance. How is it and the that wrong entrance if no one tells them they come to the same entrance half for 28 years? Yeah, I just want to make sure that smiling? we have no, that on the that's a lie. So they made that up. They made, it, it's garden spin. So he's pretty upset. And I don't blame him. You know, I would understand if he was just a, you know, a, a celebrity that just thinks he was bigger than anything and he feels like he has to go through the entrance of the employees, you know, the employees entrance or what have you. But this guy's been doing it for 30 years and James Dolan is just becoming, I don't know, I, like, I don't know what he's actually doing with the Knicks, but he's like really, really making them worse than they even are because they're pretty bad. Well, you know, there's no secret in the NBA that, you know, James Dolan owning the New York Knicks and the Knicks having a very hard time at uh, attracting free agents. Um, you know, this might not be coming out publicly within the media, but there's a, a known fact that there is a dislike for James Dolan around the league. And unfortunately, the fans of the New York Knicks are the ones suffering right now. Uh, they haven't had a, a great product on the, on the field, on the court for a very long time. Uh, you know, you had two major superstars last year in Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving going across town as opposed to the New York Knicks. And, you know, any Knicks fan will tell you that the hype for Kevin Durant to come to the Knicks was almost a sure, surefire guarantee. And, you know, when the news broke that he was going to be going to the Brooklyn Nets, it was a utter shock amongst the fans and but there were a few fans out there that weren't shocked and honestly there was a lot of people within the NBA a lot of specialists and analysts that knew this wasn't uh th this wasn't going to be happening and you know Kevin Durant and the whole situation that happened there it really it's been a it's it, there was like a, a dagger to all Nick fans and unfortunately really everything comes back down to James Dolan and just this incident again with uh, Spike Lee is just, you know, another tipping point. I mean, with all due respect, Mr. Dolan, there aren't a lot of people out there that are willing to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to attend the New York Knicks games. They have not been great. They haven't been a great product at all by any means. So, you know, for you to lose, you know, arguably your number one fan uh, on a technicality of security... And, you know, what entrance he should be entering or, you know, along the lines, you know, it's embarrassing. And it just shows again that how this organization has just ran terribly uh, for its fans. I mean, really, at this point, uh, that's why you have this organization, because the people that are paying to keep your organization afloat isn't the National Basketball Association. It's the fans. They're the ones that put the money in your pocket. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I agree with you, and I'll even add another player to that list, LeBron James. I mean, there was talks of, you know, Kevin Durant possibly going to the Knicks, Kyrie Irving poss possibly going to the Knicks, LeBron James possibly going to the Knicks. I mean, this was, they were supposed to change around when Amari Stoudemire said, you know what, screw it, I'm going to go to the Knicks, I'm going to start this up, because they were, you know, after Ewing left and, you know, all those guys... This team just kind of went on a downhill slope 
and you know they needed somebody to to take back what the Knicks actually are. I mean, they play in Madison Square Garden. Okay, we're we're Islander fans. We're we're not Knicks fans, but we can still tell you how prestigious Madison Square Garden is. We both live in New York, so it, it's just you know Madison Square Garden is like the epicenter of sports. I mean, boxing, you know, concerts, even you know the Knicks, the Rangers. You know, these are you know when people think of New York sports. As bad as the Knicks are, they're up there because of Madison Square Garden. And what James Dolan is doing to the Knicks, to the Knicks fans, to the biggest fan of them all, I mean, this is not the this is not the first time that something like this has happened. This is this is like the third time in almost two years that James Dolan has been in the news for something negative that has to do with the Knicks. You know, he had the whole thing with the fan and the video saying to sell the team and this and that. Then he had the the whole, you know, fiasco with um, Oakley. I, I mean, this is this is crazy. Now you have Spike Lee. You're just, like, basically getting rid of your biggest fans. <laughs> you know, like what you made the point with Madison Square Garden, uh, you know, growing up in New York, you know, I was one basketball game away when I was a kid to playing at the Madison Square Garden, and it was a dream come true. You know, if you if you get an opportunity to play on that court, it literally, and you even ask LeBron James and all these big time players in their first game ever playing at Madison Square Garden, it was special. You know, just the whole demeanor and the whole atmosphere in general. Uh, it's something you look forward to, and unfortunately, that gets overlooked by James Dolan and the whole idea of being you know having to play for this man. You know, I can't name you the owners of all these NBA teams. But I can, you know, sure enough tell you who the owner of the New York Knicks is. And 99% of NBA fans can tell you who the owner of the New York Knicks is just on the basis of what you just mentioned about all these stories that are constantly coming out about this man. You know, it's a big problem for the Knicks. And, you know, unfortunately, the only person that has to answer to James Dolan is James Dolan. And... It's his decision when push comes to shove uh, on who's going to be, you know, running the shots uh, with that organization. But unfortunately, it's really just backfiring to him right now. He's put a crappy uh, product on the field for a very long time. There's no doubt about it. The New York Knicks are not a team that you really want to watch day in and day out. They haven't been productive. They, They find themselves in the bottom half of the standings at all times. And unfortunately, you know, <clears throat> we are where we are right now. The Brooklyn Nets just came to Brooklyn a couple of years ago. And they've had more success at, you know, finding ways to win games for one after they basically traded their entire future. I mean, you're looking at the Brooklyn Nets. You could be looking at Jason Tatum. Yeah. I mean, Jason Tatum is arguably, you, you've seen it all over ESPN about how good he is. This man could have been on the Brooklyn Nets, and that is a big hit. Jalen Brown, too. and Of course, absolutely, him as well. These were the two picks that the Nets had traded away in the Garnett deal years ago. But what do they do? They were able to go out and get premier free agents. They've had a nice core player. Someone like D'Angelo Russell was a great player for them, and the Nets didn't even have a bad year that year. I can't tell you who the point guard was for the New York Knicks because there isn't a point guard out there that wants to come and play for this team. Yeah. And every Nick fan will tell you it's been a long time since they had a very good point guard. Yeah, nobody <laughs> wants to play here. I mean, some may say uh, Jeremy Lin was the last one, the last good point guard. Yeah, and that was <laughs> a mean, very that was long only time for one year too. <laughs> exactly, and, and, and obviously they wound up getting rid of him. Uh, yeah. much you know, not much later. So, well, the the just the thing is like like we were saying like it, it's just for now we know. Madison Square Garden, no matter what you go there for, the tickets are expensive. Concerts, Ranger games, Knicks games, doesn't matter how bad the team is. The tickets are always expensive just because it is Madison Square Garden. So now you're, you're, and they they brought this up on first take. He, over the, the last 30 years or so, that he's been a fan and he's been going to Knicks games, Spike Lee has spent over $10 million dollars. 
at Madison Square Garden on Knicks tickets. I mean, his seats are about three grand each per game. So you're going to 41 games in a year. And him, there's a lot of times that he goes to other arenas as well to see the Knicks play or see anybody else play. I just, the guy spends probably the most money out of everybody that goes to Knicks games. And you're going to give him crap for going in an entrance that he's been going in for the last 30 years. Well, I mean, it's just, it, that's, that's just the issue with, with James Dolan. Well, that's, you know, good luck trying to fill that ticket because you have a crappy product on the field. It, who's paying money like that to go to a game? I mean, people will. I mean, unfortunately, I don't understand it, but it is a known fact. The New York Knicks find ways to sell out. Well, that's what Max Kellerman said too. He's like, because, uh, Spike Lee said, I'm not going to another game for the rest of the year. But then he said that he will go to the games next year. So Max Kellerman basically told him, he's like, you're what's wrong with the Knicks is there's fans like you that no matter what he does, you're still going to spend the money to go see a crappy team play. So no matter how bad his team is, it doesn't matter. He's lining his pockets, you know, and it's just like it's just bad. It, it's, it's an just bad situation. overall, and it it's the Knicks. That's that's the worst part of it is, you know, if the Knicks were good, it would be good for basketball. It really would. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's the same thing. The Celtics. When the Celtics are good, it's good for basketball. When the Lakers are good, it's good for basketball. You know, so that's where the issue comes about is that there's such a bad owner when it comes to the Knicks. That this team that is has such a you know crazy fan base, I, I guess you could say, can't even see a winning team because of the owner. I mean, if he would just take his advice from what he did with the Rangers, the Knicks might actually be good, <laughs> you know, because when it comes down to it, and this goes for really any sport, the owner owns the team. Let the other guys, the basketball guys, worry about the basketball things. You know, owners own GMs, can be the general manager, can sign players, release players, all that stuff. Trust me, I deal with it with the Dallas Cowboys. Jerry Jones has his fingerprints all over all of the football stuff, you know, and that's what's wrong with the Dallas Cowboys is because Jerry Jones doesn't know how to take a step back. George Steinbrenner, before he got suspended, um, you know, for that whole year, he had his fingerprints all over the Yankees, and they were struggling. He takes a step back, lets the the GM be the GM, you know, with Gene Michael and all that, and they take off, you know, and they they become the Yankees. So this is the issue with owners. They the owners need to own. Take a step back from the 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 basketball or the hockey or the football or the baseball, whatever it is. Take a step back. Let the 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 sports guys do it. You, you know, chill out a little bit. Just you know, be the owner that you are, and and worry about that stuff. Don't worry about the the actual play on the field. Uh, well, you know, you you can't be any more correct. Uh, you know, again, within an entire organization, you know, going from the last guy off the bench for the New York Knicks all the way up to the owner. Like, everybody has a role on the team. And, you know, obviously sometimes people will jump into other people's roles. And, you know, obviously, like you said, there'll be uh, situations similar to, you know, the New York Knicks or the New York Yankees and the Dallas Cowboys. You know, success isn't going to come quite easily as, you know, one would hope based on everything else going on within an organization. But, your main job as an owner is, you know, you're overlooking everything, no doubt. Um, but when you're throwing your two cents in on every aspect, um, that's when it becomes an issue. Uh, that's probably been the biggest reason as to why nobody wants to go play for the New York Knicks. And there are plenty of players that are willing to go play for the New York Knicks. I mean, that's not saying that there's... But uh, the key players, I guess, are the best way to put it. And there's a lot of key guys in the NBA right now. There's a lot of all-stars and... Unfortunately, a lot of these all-stars are starting to team up. It's uh, starting to put, uh, you know, an okay product on the field. 
for more Running Up the Score. Go follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at R-U-T-S Sports.